G'day guys, Gunnar Russ back once again. We'll walk to this video about how to budget with game collecting. Now I'm gonna give you guys a few tips on how I personally keep myself within a budget throughout the year and a couple of things that I have done that has helped get the collection to the size it is because uh, by no means have I spent a huge amount of money on the games I've got. It's all been kept within a certain budget um, and it's built up over time. This isn't something that's just magically appeared, all these games that I have, it's, it's happened over many years. So one of the biggest things that I always do when I'm collecting video games is I make sure I keep to a budget. Now my personal budget, guys, is $150. Now that might be different for you guys. Um, I work full time, so my money is, you know, it might be a little bit more than what you're earning. Um, so you might want to have it a little bit less, but for me, 150 is my max. And I honestly, I could afford more, but I like to keep to that amount so then I make sure that I look after the most important things in life, which is one, yourself, your family, the roof over your head. If you own a house or you're paying off your house, you want to make sure you pay it off quickly. Um, you've got your bills and you've got your leisure things. So you're like going out with family and friends, your girlfriend, taking your wife out. Those sort of things in life are more important than video games guys, trust me, they definitely are. So I keep to $150. And you'd be surprised guys, how much you can get with $150. Now, what I like to do myself is, after I upload a video on YouTube, I will go out and I'll buy myself a game. That's my reward to myself. That's something that, you know, gives me the drive to make sure I get these videos done. Um, I love making content, trust me guys, I do. But when you've got a little treat at the end, when you finish your upload and you're uploading it and you go into things like Oz Game Shop and those sort of websites, that's what really drives me to pick them up. But yeah, I keep to that $150. And you'd be surprised, as I said, you can get so many games with $150. And I'll be going on things like, you know, Oz Game Shop is a really good website, guys. I'll go on things like eBay. eBay, surprisingly, you can pick up some really good games if you look around. And I might do a video on how I go about finding games on eBay because I think eBay is a great tool. Also shop around in different stores, looking through, you know, catalogs and stuff and seeing who's got the best price. But, you know, this was a recent pickup, um, probably about oh, maybe four or five months ago. And I'm a big fan of Far Cry. And when this first came out, obviously it was around $89 and I could have gone out straight away within my budget and purchased it, that I could. But I decided to hold off and I picked this one up for $20 brand new, which is an absolute steal for such a great game. So for me personally, I have no desire to go rush out and buy that game day one because, you know, to me, that's, it's a lot of money to fork out for one game. I would rather spend $100, $150 in a month. And you can imagine if you're picking up this one game for $20, you can imagine how many games you can get for $150. You can get a heap of them. So that is one of my big tips there. I know a lot of people tend to get worried that if they don't pick up a game day one, they're gonna get the game spoiled. And I can honestly say that I'm on YouTube all the time, I'm on Instagram all the time, and very, very rarely have I ever, ever had a game really truly spoiled um, by going on any of those sort of forums. You'll find that um, as long as you stay away from things like game reviews, it shouldn't affect it. So yeah, that's my thing guys, is I would say make sure that you have a budget, stick to that. And don't get me wrong, sometimes I will go out and splurge on a new release, like the up and coming Gundam SCG Generations game. I know you guys have been hearing me say so much about it. I will definitely be getting that day one because it's something that is truly special to me, Gundam. And that's something that I want day one. So there are moments where I will go out and buy the game day one, but generally I will wait anywhere between six to 12 months for that game price. To drop down. Another point guys is don't feel bad about purchasing games via digital. There seems to be this big stigma on YouTube about you know if you don't have that physical copy it's not you know worthy of, of your collection and for me I'd say that there's just a load of poop that is not true. If you can find a game cheaper via digital 
by all means, I think, go out there and buy it. You know, especially with games that are, you know, from the retro eras, like, you know, your PlayStation 1, they can be very expensive. I, I'll use the Final Fantasy IX as an example. Uh, the other, a few months back, I managed to pick that up for 995 which was an absolute steal for what is a great Final Fantasy game, I highly recommend. Um, but if you were to purchase that game physically, and I've got the physical copy, but I just wanted to uh, have that on my PS4 via digital for 95, and I had the trophies on there, which was an added advantage there as well. But if you were to purchase Final Fantasy IX physically uh, via, via Power Region, especially in Australia, you're looking at $90 plus, and that, to me, is a lot of money to be paying for a game that is that old and has been around for that amount of time. Um, so what I'm getting at, guys, is you don't have to uh, you know, buy everything in physical form, especially with older games. Um, do shop around, look around, uh, keep an eye out for sales, on PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, you know, Nintendo eStore as well. You can find some stuff for really cheap prices, especially at certain times of the year. So don't ever feel ashamed, guys, to purchase things digitally. Um, if you want to make a good argument to anyone out there, you can turn around and say, well, it is technically a little bit more environmentally friendly than these bits of plastic. And don't get me wrong, I, if I could have everything in physical form, I would because I think it's just a beautiful piece of artwork and often I feel like that a lot of these games, if something happens to your console, you might not be able to you know, gain those games back, um, especially once those consoles are no longer supported online. I get it guys, but yeah, like I said, don't feel bad about purchasing things uh, via digital um, if it helps you keep within that budget. And lastly guys, another great way to build your collection and keep within that budget is to trade games. And this way, you're not spending a huge amount of money. Um, you can just trade with your friends. And I'll do this often when I'm, you know, looking online on Oz Game Shop or I'm in, you know, JB Hi-Fi or EB Games, I'll be looking for, you know, cheap games that are within my $150 game budget and I'll put them aside within my collection and I'll use these games for trade. And I've, in the past, I've done a lot of uh, great trades. On, I would highly recommend doing things like Instagram. I've done a lot of great trades on Instagram. Uh, back in the day, I did one with Neil from Too Busy Gamers and um, we did a little bit of a trade there. That was a great way of, you know, um, finding ga extra games for the collection and uh, not having to really spend anything other than postage. So that's another big tip there. Well, there you have it, guys. A look at how I go about budgeting with gaming. I'd love to hear below on some tips that you use personally. Um, that would be awesome. So make sure you drop some comments down, guys. Always love seeing what you guys have to say. Don't forget to leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please smash that subscriber button and join this awesome community that is Gundam Rust Gaming. All right, guys, see you later.